friends. Welcome to another installment of Behind the Glass with a Glass. Today I want to tell you about my tripod. Now I know that sounds riveting, but I've had a few people email me and uh, leave comments in the YouTubes uh, asking me about my tripod, specifically what model it is. So I figure this might be a good opportunity to walk you through what it's all about. Uh, it's kind of an interesting tripod because uh, it costs around $1,800, which I know sounds insane. Uh, it sounds insane to me, but I thought it'd be interesting to, to kind of walk you through, you know, what makes an $1,800 tripod? How in the hell is it worth that much money? So that's what we're going to be looking at today. But let me tell you first about the beverage I'm enjoying here. This is my very favorite Hefeweizen style beer. It might even be my favorite beer of all time. Now the brewery is German and the name of the brewery is also in German. And I've done my research online. I've looked at a lot of videos and read a lot of articles on how this is pronounced. I think I've got it right. But if there's any German viewers out there, uh, please chime in, correct me if I'm wrong. But here's, here's what I got for you. Wein Steffener. Wein Steffener. My apologies to the German fans. I'm sure that was a horrible, horrible, ugly American accent. But that's the best I can come up with on how it's pronounced. I think that's right. Wein Steffener. Wein Steffener. There we go. Um, but I'm hesitant about it because so far... I've been corrected three out of three times by uh, waiters at restaurants. I think they're wrong, but I've still been corrected, so I'm a little uncertain about it. Uh, the first time I was at Yard House, local restaurant around here, and uh, you know I didn't I didn't want to go full German on her, so I kind of Americanized it. I'm like, I'll have the the wine Stefaner, and then she's like, the wine Stefaner, okay. Um, didn't I'll let it go? Not gonna correct her. I think I did my research right, but. Whatever, I'll let her have it. Hour later, different waiter comes along. Hey, bro, what you drinking there? You need a, re need a refill? Uh, yeah, definitely, yeah. What you, what you drinking? Uh, the wine Stefaner? The wine Stefaner? All right, coming right up. And then just a couple weeks ago, I was at another restaurant. And uh, yes, yeah, so I'll have the, the wine Stefaner. He's like, the, the what? Hmm? And I'm like, the, now I'm embarrassed. The, the wine, the, the, the Hefweizen? Um, he's like, oh, yeah, okay. It's actually pronounced wine Stefaner. They're wrong, right? It's my everything I've looked at online from German resources is Wein Steffener. I really don't think it's Wein Stefaner, but whatever, I could be wrong. German fans, if there's any out there, please do chime in. Um, but let's talk about the beer. Now, this brewery is fascinating because it's the oldest beer, brewery in the world. It comes from the year 1040. That's insane. That's so old. Just to give you an idea of how old that is. That's 580 years before the Mayflower reached America. When the Aztec Empire fell, this brewery was already 481 years old. This brewery was established 160 years before clothing buttons were invented. That's insane. This is older than buttons. So I would say they've had enough time to figure out how to make a damn fine beer. And it definitely shows uh, in this Weinsteffener Hefeweizen beer. It has a 4.41 out of 5 stars on Beer Advocate. Um, as I mentioned, it's one of my favorite beers, period. I find it very refreshing. It's great on a hot day. Uh, I normally reach for like a Mexican-style lager on a nice hot day, but uh, this is so refreshing, and it's delicious from start to finish. You know, some beers, they... they taste great when they're first in your mouth, but then by the time you swallow it, they've turned bitter and they're just gross and, you know, they just, they don't finish right. But this, start to finish, is absolutely incredible. Mmm. Oh, man. It's so good. Like all Hefeweizens, tastes like banana and clove. That's what they all say. Um, highly recommend going out and get some. It, it can be a little hard to find. Um, not everyone carries it. My local Total Wine and More carries it. Um, so I, I like to pick myself up a, uh, a cold six pack every now and then. I always make sure I got these in the fridge. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I know I should be pouring this into a glass, but I don't have the right glass for this. So I'm going to enjoy it out of the bottle. I don't care. But let's talk tripods. So, this is the tripod in question. 
Now, as I mentioned, this thing all in is about $1,800. And that's an outrageous price for a tripod. I did not buy it all at once. I piecemealed it throughout the years. So I had the head for a while, and then a couple years later I got the legs, and a couple years later I upgraded the head to be different. Um, so it's, a, it's an investment. But for me, it's worth every penny. Um, I have it set up the way it is largely for the architectural work I do. So I do uh, commercial architecture for a living, so I make the majority of my income. And this tripod makes the job a whole lot less frustrating than it would if it was a uh, a lamer tripod. Um, you might be wondering why I don't do a geared head if I'm doing architectural photography so much. Geared heads are much more popular for architectural photography for good reason. They're much easier to level the camera. But uh, I like the speed of a ball head and I'm just used to it so uh, I haven't found the need to, to get a geared head. Uh, but let's talk about it. So first off, um, total weight comes in about 7.3 pounds, 7.4 pounds. Um, and for how tall it is, that's actually very lightweight. This thing uh, can actually get my camera up to about seven and a half feet when it's fully extended. I'm six foot two, and I can actually stand underneath the tripod when it's fully extended. It goes crazy tall. And that's really helpful for architectural work because sometimes I have to get uh, above cars so I can get a better view of like a shopping center or an office building or whatever, and that can help with that. Um, also, it's really useful for uneven terrain. That's actually the main reason I got such a tall tripod, is uh, I would find myself on uneven terrain, so let's say a bunch of rocks or whatever, and I want to get the tripod up to here. On flat land, that would be no problem, but because it's so uneven, the legs are having to go way down, and it's dropping the tripod lower than I want. By having such long legs, uh, I can extend a leg way down low into you know, a crevice or down a slope or whatever, and the tripod's still plenty tall. Um, but the, uh, the height is the main reason I got this particular tripod, but it does not travel well as a result. I don't really fly with this unless I absolutely have to. Um, now the legs, uh, these are Gitzo tripod legs. It's a, a systematic series three carbon fiber, uh, the extra long version. And the legs themselves cost about 970 bucks. Uh, so again, not cheap. The legs weigh about 5.05 pounds, uh, not including the head. But everything by Gitzo is excellent. Everything I've owned by Gitzo is excellent. The carbon fiber legs, of course, help reduce the weight. Um, but one thing I really like about Gitzo tripods is they're very repairable and very serviceable. So they don't just break and you gotta throw it away. Um, you know, a lot of tripods out there, they're carbon fiber, but they get really crappy plastic uh, connections and plastic locks and all this kind of stuff. And as soon as you snap one of those, which you will eventually, it's dead. It's gone. You can't get any replacement parts. You just got to get a new tripod. But this, if something wears out, something breaks down, you can buy new parts. It actually comes with spare parts um, and then you're back up and running. So I like that about it. It's, it's kind of a long-term investment. It's like having, uh, I don't know, a car you can just fix over and over and over again. It just keeps running. So that's one thing I like about it. But also just as I mentioned, their parts are just high quality. Um, the screws, the, the locks, the rotating locks here, the feet, it actually comes with uh, uh, snowshoes um, and a couple different style feet for the, for the feet, uh, for the legs here. Um, but all around, just get great, uh, great tripod legs. And I got them wrapped up with some uh, uh, foam insulation and uh, sport tape. One thing I really like about the systematic tripods um, from Gitzo is they're kind of modular with the center column. You'll notice my tripod here doesn't have a center column, which I don't like. I would prefer to have a center column. You know, I've talked to people where it's like, oh, I really want a tripod without a center column. It's like, why? There's, there's no upside, really. It saves a little bit of weight, but it's not huge. I mean, if you're shooting down on the ground, center column might be annoying, but uh, it's, I would prefer to have one uh, just because I can make minor changes in, in height. But good news is I can get a center column anytime I want. The head pops out, you got a base right here, and I can just get a center column that slides in there, locks in, I put the tripod head on that, and now I got a tripod with a center column. Um, they actually make this crazy center column for these that extends like five feet above the tripod. Kind of nuts, but you know, I like that they're modular. If I don't want a center column, I don't have to have one, but if I want to get a center column, 
it's an option. Um, so that's the legs. Now the head is made by Really Right Stuff. It's a ball head. Uh, it's the BH55LR. Uh, LR is for lever release. So it's an Arca Swiss style clamp on the top, uh, which is great because it's very universal and it's easy to find plates for them. Um, but the lever release makes it very quick to get my, my camera on and off, which is an absolute necessity um, for how spastic I am when I'm shooting sometimes. Um, a lot of them have just a screw knob and that would drive me insane, uh, not being able to flick it off quick like that. Um, it's the BH55, so it's their biggest tripod head. Uh, and great big knobs on it with nice knurling. Uh, everything by Really Right Stuff is just phenomenal quality. I've had this tripod head for more years than I can remember and um, never had to service it. It's never broken down, it's never bound up on me. It's never had any issues. Um, now, a couple years or, well, maybe five or six years into having this tripod head, I decided to upgrade the base here uh, to have a panning head. So the panning head allows me to rotate the camera on top of the tripod, so, or on top of the tripod head, so that I don't have to rotate it at the base. Now the reason I got that was for a very particular reason, which is when I'm doing architectural photography, I level the camera perfectly, because that's generally what you do in architectural work. So I level the camera perfectly using the bubble level, and uh, sometimes I, I went a little too far right, a little too far left. But I did all that hard work of leveling the camera, so I don't want to screw that up. So I can just loosen the panning base and swing my camera left to right without screwing up the level. Um, and that's saved a lot of frustration and time in the field. Because it used to be if I got it perfectly level but the camera was a little bit right, I would have to loosen the whole thing and then reposition and re-level. Um, that's also where a geared tripod head would probably have an advantage over this. But I find the ball head with the panning base uh, is very quick and easy to make minor corrections like that. But all in, this tripod head, including, including the panning clamp, is 640 bucks. It's an expensive tripod head. It was really hard to convince myself that I needed this. Uh, but once I got it, I'm never going back. This thing is built so well. One thing I like about this head is when you lock it down, it is locked, baby. It ain't creeping. Uh, it ain't sagging because you got a heavy lens on it. It is locked down tight as soon as you turn this knob and lock it down. So I really like uh, stuff made by Really Right Stuff, um, or RRS, as they're calling themselves now. Uh, tripod head weighs about 2.3 pounds, so it's a pretty heavy head. Now the Arca Swiss style plates here um, come in a lot of different varieties. There's generic plates that kind of fit any camera. But if you really want to go top of the line, you get yourself a form-fitted L-bracket to your camera. And that allows you to mount the camera horizontally or mount it vertically uh, without swinging the camera over the side of the tripod head. Uh, I absolutely love L brackets for DSLR style cameras. Um, the L plates aren't cheap, as you'd expect. There's a theme here, obviously. The L plates are about 180 bucks, um, so it's an investment. But all these things that just sound like an insane amount of money, um, when you're doing it for a living, time is money. And anything I can do to shave off minutes for each picture that I'm taking uh, is ultimately worth it uh, in the end. Um, now for my large format cameras, uh, there's no form fitted plates for it. So I just get uh, a six inch rail um, and that acts as a quick release plate on the bottom of my large formats, slides in here nicely. And then I can slide the camera left and right uh, on that six inch rail if I need to. So, Beefy tripod, expensive tripod, but makes the job easier. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna need to replace it anytime soon. Uh, it's fixable, serviceable, and it's been holding up damn well. Shows a little bit of wear, but that's about it. Um, so there you go. That's what makes an $1,800 tripod. Um, I would say go out and get yourself one, but don't. It's, it's insane, unless you're doing um, tons of shoots every week like I am probably not worth it but I love it and that's the that's the tripod what you should go out and get yourself is some vein Steffeners uh, get yourself a nice cold six-pack because there is nothing more refreshing on a nice hot day than tipping back one of these vein Steffeners and again my apologies to any German fans out there if I'm absolutely butchering the name but as always, 
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.